We continue today with chapter 12, Looking Within. Miracles demonstrate that learning has occurred under the right guidance, for learning is invisible and what has been learned can be recognized only by its results. Its generalization is demonstrated as you use it in more and more situations. You will recognize that you have learned there is no order of difficulty in miracles when you apply them to all situations. There is no situation to which miracles do not apply, and by applying them to all situations you will gain the real world. For in this holy perception you will be made whole, and the atonement will radiate from your acceptance of it for yourself to everyone the Holy Spirit sends you for a blessing. In every child of God his blessing lies, and in your blessing of the children of God is his blessing to you. Everyone in the world must play his part in its redemption in order to recognize that the world has been redeemed. You cannot see the invisible, yet if you see its effects you know it must be there. By perceiving what it does, you recognize its being, and by what it does, you learn what it is. You cannot see your strengths, but you gain confidence in their existence as they enable you to act, and the results of your actions you can see. The Holy Spirit is invisible, but you can see the results of His presence, and through them you will learn that He is there. What He enables you to do is clearly not of this world, for miracles violate every law of reality as this world judges it. Every law of time and space, of magnitude and mass, is transcended. For what the Holy Spirit enables you to do is clearly beyond all of them. Perceiving His results, you will understand where He must be and finally know what He is. You cannot see the Holy Spirit, but you can see His manifestations, and unless you do, you will not realize He is there. Miracles are His witnesses, and speak for His presence. What you cannot see becomes real to you only through the witnesses that speak for it. You can be aware of what you cannot see, and it can become compellingly real to you as its presence becomes manifest through you. Do the Holy Spirit's work, for you share in His function. As your function in heaven is creation, so your function on earth is healing. God shares His function with you in heaven, and the Holy Spirit shares His with you on earth. As long as you believe you have other functions, so long will you need correction. For this belief is the destruction of peace, a goal in direct opposition to the Holy Spirit's purpose. You see what you expect, and you expect what you invite. Your perception is the result of your invitation coming to you as you sent for it. Whose manifestations would you see? Of whose presence would you be convinced? For you will believe in what you manifest, and as you look out, so will you see in. Two ways of looking at the world are in your mind, and your perception will reflect the guidance you have chosen. I am the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, and when you see me, it will be because you have invited Him for He will send you His witnesses, if you will but look upon them. Remember always that you see what you seek, for what you seek you will find. The ego finds what it seeks, and only that. It does not find love, for that is not what it is seeking. Yet seeking and finding are the same, and if you seek for two goals you will find them, but you will recognize neither. You will think they are the same, because you want both of them. 
The mind always strives for integration, and if it is split, and wants to keep the split, it will still believe it has one goal by making it seem to be one. I said before that what you project or extend is up to you, but you must do one or the other, for that is the law of mind, and you must look in before you look out. As you look in, you choose the guide for seeing, and then you look out and behold his witnesses. This is why you find what you seek. What you want in yourself, you will make manifest, and you will accept it from the world, because you put it there by wanting it. When you think you are projecting what you do not want, it is still because you do want it. This leads directly to dissociation, for it represents the acceptance of two goals, each perceived in a different place, separated from each other because you made them different. The mind then sees a divided world outside itself, but not within. This gives it an illusion of integrity and, it, and enables it to believe that it is pursuing one goal. Yet as long as you perceive the world is split, you are not healed. For to be healed is to pursue one goal, because you have accepted only one and want but one. When you want only love, you will see nothing else. The contradictory nature of the witnesses you perceive is merely the reflection of your conflicting invitations. You have looked upon your mind and accepted opposition there, having sought it there, but do not then believe that the witnesses for opposition are true, for they attest only to your decision about reality, returning to you the messages you gave them. Love, too, is recognized by its messengers. If you make love manifest, its messengers will come to you because you invited them. The power of decision is your one remaining freedom as a prisoner of this world. You can decide to see it right. What you made of it is not its reality, for its reality is only what you give it. You cannot really give anything but love to anyone or anything, nor can you really receive anything but love from them. If you think you have received anything else, it is because you have looked within and thought you saw the power to give something else within yourself. It was only this decision that determined what you found, for it was the decision for what you sought. You are afraid of me because you looked within and are afraid of what you saw. Yet you could not have seen reality, for the reality of your mind is the loveliest of God's creations. Coming only from God, its power and grandeur could only bring you peace if you really looked upon it. If you are afraid, it is because you saw something that is not there. Yet in that same place you could have looked upon me and all your brothers in the perfect safety of the mind which created us. For we are there in the peace of the Father who wills to extend his peace through you. When you have accepted your mission to extend peace, you will find peace, for by making it manifest you will see it. Its holy witnesses will surround you because you called upon them, and they will come to you. I have heard your call, and I have answered it, but you will not look upon me nor hear the answer that you sought. That is because you do not yet want only that. Yet as I become more real to you, you will learn that you do want only that. And you will see me as you look within, and we will look upon the real world together. Through the eyes of Christ, only the real world exists, and only the real world can be seen. As you decide, so will you see and all that you see but witnesses to your decision. When you look within and see me, it will be because you have decided to manifest truth, 
and as you manifest it, you will see it both within and without. You will see it without because you saw it first within. Everything you behold without is a judgment of what you beheld within. If it is your judgment, it will be wrong, for judgment is not your function. If it is the judgment of the Holy Spirit, it will be right, for judgment is his function. You share his function only by judging as he does, reserving no judgment at all for yourself. You will judge against yourself, but he will judge for you. Remember then that whenever you look without and react unfavorably to what you see, you have judged yourself unworthy and have condemned yourself to death. The death penalty is the ego's ultimate goal, for it fully believes that you are a criminal, as deserving of death as God knows you are deserving of life. The death penalty never leaves the ego's mind, for that is what it always reserves for you in the end. Wanting to kill you as the final expression of its feeling for you, it lets you live but to await death. It will torment you while you live, but its hatred is not satisfied until you die. For your destruction is the one end toward which it works, and the only end with which it will be satisfied. The ego is not a traitor to God, to whom treachery is impossible, but it is a traitor to you, who believe that you have been treacherous to your father. That is why the undoing of guilt is an essential part of the Holy Spirit's teaching. For as long as you feel guilty, you are listening to the voice of the ego, which tells you that you have been treacherous to God, and therefore deserve death. You will think that death comes from God and not from the ego because, by confusing yourself with the ego, you believe that you want death, and from what you want God does not save you. When you are tempted to yield to the desire for death, remember that I did not die. You will realize that this is true when you look within and see me. Would I have overcome death for myself alone? And would eternal life have been given me of the Father unless he had also given it to you? When you learn to make me manifest, you will never see death, for you will have looked upon the deathless in yourself, and you will see only the eternal as you look out upon a world that cannot die. And from the workbook, Lesson 92 Miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one. The idea for today is an extension of the previous one. You do not think of light in terms of strength, and darkness in terms of weakness. That is because your idea of what seeing means is tied up with the body, and its eyes and brain. Thus you believe that you can change what you see by putting little bits of glass before your eyes. This is among the magical beliefs that come from the conviction you are a body, and the body's eyes can see. You also believe the body's brain can think. If you but understood the nature of thought, you could but laugh at this insane idea. It is as if you thought you held the match that lights the sun and gives it all its warmth, or that you held the world within your hands, securely bound until you let it go. This is no more foolish than to believe the body's eyes can see, the brain can think. It is God's strength in you that is the light in which you see, and it is His mind with which you think. His strength denies your weakness. It is your weakness that sees through the body's eyes, peering about in darkness to behold the likeness of itself. The small, the weak, the sickly and the dying, those in need, the helpless and afraid, the sad, the poor, the starving, and the joyless. 
These are seen through eyes that cannot see and cannot bless. Strength overlooks these things by seeing past appearances. It keeps its steady gaze upon the light that lies beyond them. It unites with light, of which it is a part. It sees itself. It brings the light in which your self appears. In darkness you perceive a self that is not there. Strength is the truth about you. Weakness is an idol falsely worshipped and adored that strength may be dispelled and darkness rule where God appointed that there should be light. Strength comes from truth and shines with light its source has given it. Weakness reflects the darkness of its maker. It is sick and looks on sickness, which is like itself. Truth is a savior and can only will for happiness and peace for everyone. It gives its strength to everyone who asks, in limitless supply. It sees that lack in anyone would be a lack in all, and so it gives its light that all may see and benefit as one. Its strength is shared, that it may bring to all the miracle in which they will unite in purpose, and forgiveness, and in love. Weakness, which looks in darkness, cannot see a purpose in forgiveness and in love. It sees all others different from itself, and nothing in the world that it would share. It judges and condemns, but does not love. In darkness it remains to hide itself, and dreams that it is strong and conquering, a victor over limitations that but grow in darkness to enormous size. It fears and it attacks and hates itself, and darkness covers everything it sees, leaving it dreams as fearful as itself. No miracles are here, but only hate. It separates itself from what it sees, while light and strength perceive themselves as one. The light of strength is not the light you see. It does not change and flicker and go out. It does not shift from night to day and back till the morning comes again. The light of strength is constant, sure as love, forever glad to give itself away, because it cannot give but to itself. No one can ask in vain to share its sight, and none who enters its abode can leave without a miracle before his eyes and strength and light abiding in his heart. The strength in you will offer you the light, and guide your seeing so you do not dwell on idle shadows that the body's eyes provide for self-deception. Strength and light unite in you, and where they meet, yourself stands ready to embrace you as its own. Such is the meeting place we try to find and rest in today. For the peace of God is where yourself, his son, is waiting now to meet itself again and be as one. Let us give twenty minutes twice today to join this meeting. Let yourself be brought unto yourself. His strength will be the light in which the gift of sight is given you. Leave then the dark a little while today and we will practice seeing in the light, closing the body's eyes and asking truth to show us how to find the meeting place of self and self, where light and strength are one. Morning and evening we will practice thus. After the morning meeting we will use the day in preparation for the time at night when we will meet again in trust. Let us repeat as often as we can the idea for today, and recognize that we are being introduced to sight, and led away from darkness to the light where only miracles can be perceived. Miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one.
Today we look within to behold the miracle. Today we realize that there is no situation to which miracles do not apply. And by applying them to all situations, we will gain the real world. Today we recognize that we must extend or project, and we choose to extend. The Holy Spirit would have us extend. The Holy Spirit is invisible, but you can see the results of His presence, and through them you will learn that He is there. The results of your actions you can see. This is how we gain confidence in the miracle. You cannot see the Holy Spirit, but you can see His manifestations. And unless you do, you will not realize He is there. Miracles are His witnesses and speak for His presence. What you cannot see becomes real to you only through the witnesses that speak for it. This is the mechanism of forgiveness. This is making manifest that which is in our hearts, that which we share with the Holy Spirit. This is looking within, unafraid to look upon the Christ. There are two ways of looking at the world, and our perception will reflect the guidance we have chosen. Today we choose the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Today we will be one with our true Christ Self. As we look within, we choose the guide for our seeing. And then we look out and behold the witnesses of whichever guide that we have chosen. This is why we do find what we seek, but we must be clear of what we want. We will see, we will perceive what we want, but we must be clear of what it is that we want. Do we want peace? Do we want happiness and joy? The power of decision is your one remaining freedom as a prisoner of this world. You can decide to see it right. Today we choose right-minded seeing, aligned with the Holy Spirit. Today we accept our mission to extend peace and find peace. By making it manifest, we will see it. Today we will want only what is our inheritance. We will release all other functions, all other uses for the body. Today we remember that the body's eyes do not see. The body's brain does not think. Thought is far beyond the body and the brain, and the vision of Christ does not involve the body at all. It is only the ego's darkness that peers through the body's eyes. It is only the ego that tells us that the brain can think. The Holy Spirit's strength overlooks these things by seeing past appearances. It keeps its steady gaze upon the light that sees beyond them. It unites with light of which it is a part. 
Thus, strength comes from truth. Today, we accept this strength. This strength is cons consistent, it's constant, it's sure, and it's forever. Today we offer this strength to all our brothers and sisters. We remind ourselves of this strength today as we say, Miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one. Amen. <laughs>